Hello everyone, this is Don Shanahan of EveryMovieHasALesson.com and this is the Wonder Woman review for the Movie Classroom series where I combine an interactive whiteboard app with the reading of my review to kind of give you just a different, more visual and audio way to digest my reviews. Uh, I grade on a five-point scale and Wonder Woman is a four-star summer blockbuster. I was very much impressed and I'd love to share with you what I thought about it. Here comes my review. Uh, paraphrasing the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the three-part noun definition of the word wonder can be summarized as, quote, a cause of astonishment, the quality of excited admiration, or rapt attention at something awesomely mysterious or new to one's experience. Used as an adjective in the proper name, the word couldn't be more fitting of Princess Diana of Themyscira, better known as Wonder Woman. Whether it represents a cog in a larger universe, a historical watershed for women's leadership, or the answered prayers of long-suffering fans and idolizing dreamer, the film bearing her name is a valiant, momentous, and satisfying first step fitting of the iconic heroine. Molded from godly clay and raised on a mythical island shielded from the world, Diana, played by Fast and Furious franchise star Gal Gadot, has been bred since, since a young age under the guidance of her mother, Hippolyta, Hippolyta, played by Connie Nielsen, and her aunt, Antiope, played by Robin Wright, to be the fiercest and best warrior among the all-women tribe of Amazons of the island of Themyscira. The race of warrior women constantly prepare for the time when the god of war, Ares, resurfaces to bring havoc to the world of man. Unexpectedly, the human world collides with Themyscira when a damaged plane piloted by American spy Steve Trevor, played by the self-appointed above-averageness of Chris Pine, crashes near its beautiful shores. Diana rescues Steve and learns of the war to end all wars, i.e. World War I, happening beyond her island. Inspired by the cause to save lives and defeat the unseen source of evil warmongering that she figures to be the god of war Ares in be brought back to kind of either human or societal form. She departs with Steve and enters the world in the final days of World War I as an armistice being negotiated towards the end. One diabolical German general named Ludendorff, played by Danny Houston, kind of a professional movie villain if I may say so, uh, refuses to have his side go quietly. He is secretly concocting with the help of a twisted chemist dubbed Dr. Poison, played by Spanish actress Elena An Anaya, a deadly hydrogen-based strain of toxic gas that cannot be stopped by the protective masks of the time. Steve's escape with Ludendorff's plan plans derailed him to the island where Diana found him before he was able to alert the London's Allied High Command, embodied by the leadership of Sir Patrick Morgan, played by David Thewlis. Returning with the demigoddess incognito at his side as his quote-unquote secretary, Steve jumps back into the clandestine war effort with a band of mercenary friends, played by the trio of Ewan Bremner, Saeed Tagmora, and Eugene Braverock as kind of your rainbow collection of demographics and cast-offs of smugglers um, that Steve uses to help stop the production deployment of the new toxin. Not content with sitting idly by in the name of espionage on the edge of the atrocities she sees in no man's land, the warrior princess, armed with her sword, shield, and lasso, emerges to fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. And let me tell you, if you've seen the trailer you know this moment, when that moment comes and the Harry Gregson Williams score really starts to pound its presence, uh, crowds and popcorn buckets will erupt in thunderous excitement and approval at the full-fledged and full-bodied appearance and battle-ready battle ready Wonder Woman. It is the culminating peak of earning true character investment that gains strength with each of the hefty 141 minutes of director Patty Jenkins' film, her first film since 2003's Charlize Theron Oscar-winning film Monster. Wonder Woman util utilizes Dan uh, Diana's origin and her discovery of the world through Steve Trevor to effectively build a foundation of principles rooted in virtue and righteousness. Simply put, the screenwriting and story team of comic book and TV writer Alan Heinberg, Jason, uh, Jason Fuchs from Ice Age Continental Drift, and DCEU steward Zack Snyder on a story writing credit, uh, ace this legendary character as well as they could for her big screen debut. 
this is still the DCEU. It's not the most clean or universal transaction. There's not a particular story of comic canon that's being kind of told in this origin story. But for this film universe and for the condensing part of two hours, I feel like it works as a um, as an appropriate and 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 well earned origin story. Um, where this film and this writing team completely fails, unfortunately, in a very Marvel-esque fashion, is with a wasted and ranting one-dimensional main villain that bloats the final act. Um, Danny Houston and uh, his Dr. Poison sidekick aren't the most thickly written villains to begin with, and then when the when, when the big villain that you're waiting for, i.e. the God of War Ares, does show up in the end, it's... It's got a great twist that kind of reveals the identity of what it is, but the misuse of Ares is an egregious missed opportunity that combines with the lesser ones in areas of storytelling, trimming, and muddled special effects. We're still at a over two-hour movie that can get a little long. Um, no matter what, the victory of Wonder Woman remains Gal Gadot. Um, it's not her exotic allure or physical prowess that win you over about her playing Wonder Woman, though she's perfect in those areas, don't get me wrong. It's her sentiment and her conviction as a heroine. Every steely stare of fortitude gives way to a smile of such warmth and purity from the actress that is completely winning in a portrayal and in a very inspirational way to the audience. Her depiction of Wonder Woman embodies the best qualities of spirit and optimism that earned this icon's 76 years of adulation and hero worship. Any of the petty and trolling criticism and really deplorable body-shaming nonsense that clouded Gal Gadot's casting in this role deserves to melt away and die after this film. Wonder Woman, flat out, deserves every opportunity to earn each piece of that aforementioned dictionary definition of wonder. Uh, that's my kind of full body take on Wonder Woman. Um, you know me. I apply life lessons, whether they're serious or farcical, to movie reviews, and I have three for Wonder Woman. Lesson number one uh, is kind of the mantra of the film, and it's kind of about something I repeated earlier in the review, but lesson number one is fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. Comic books and their adapted films target simple themes for younger audiences and readers because they work and they are universal. That's, you know... These are no more extensions of pop culture and pop writing and they go all the way back to, honestly, mythological roots of you know good old fiction storytelling and legend. So Diana, as this character, with all of her abilities and courage, rises to become a tireless defender of the weak, something her, honestly, her red cape future teammate could do a little more of on screen in his film. Take note, Henry Cavill. Keep showing up those boys, goddess of truth. Wonder Woman, you're on the right track. Lesson number two. Uh, there's two ideals to heroism that come out in uh, in the way that Wonder Woman uh, is described or even the way Steve Trevor describes her. And it's the first one is uh, what heroes we believe. Um, the idea that can we what which which people and which um, leaders or heroes can we uh, find belief in or that or where do their beliefs come from? So Diana's chosen cause from lesson number one, the whole idea of fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. Um, is uh, is a belief uh, among the oppressed. You know, it, it rallies the people that she's defending to believe in her. Yet, it, it's her valor also stems from her own idealistic belief in the good inside of all people. Um, there's probably a layer to this in the film that it makes Diana naive, but I think it's more of virtue and purity that I think is a good core belief to the character. One way or another, those beliefs feed one another. The, def- the the weak that are being defended and believe in their hero, and the hero believing in them that reach the aspiring levels that make Wonder Woman just an iconic hero. Lesson number three. Um, believing in a hero is one thing. Deserving that is another. So lesson number three is what heroes we deserve. Wonder Woman is really pretty much just... Wonder Woman, to say it better, Wonder Woman is but one warrior. To seize peace from a setting of war and to accomplish the community of love that she wishes for, her presence and example has to inspire and empower others to act and change towards the same goals. She can't be the only one swinging the swords. She can't be the only one searching for the virtue, searching for the love, searching for the uh, peace. Uh, If she can be the one that starts it, fantastic, but others have to do it too. 
Only then, when people work together towards those same goals, do they earn and deserve the heroism that she, Wonder Woman, gives so selflessly. Uh, that's my review of Wonder Woman. I hope you enjoyed what you uh, listened to or watched. Uh, thank you very much for coming to over to these movie classroom series. I'm trying to keep these uh, going for special films, and the summer blockbuster time is the best way to do it. So um, for my website and for myself, I say thank you, and I'll see you next time.